Good morning. Welcome to St. Timothy Catholic Church. As today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. Before we begin, I'd like to go over our offertory song, which is called Shepherd. So go ahead and open up your worship aid. Turn to the song right in the middle called Shepherd. So we've sang it before, so let's go and sing it from the top. In the process, in the waiting. In the process, in the waiting, you're making melodies over me, and your presence is the promise, for I am a pilgrim on a journey. final section of the song, Oh, How I Love You. Let's all lift our voice this morning. Come on, sing it. Oh, how I love you. How Let's all stand. Let's turn to those around us. Welcome and greet one another. Welcome and greetings. Welcome and greetings. Good morning. Now let's take a moment of quiet as we open our hearts to our Lord, who is the Good Shepherd. Merciful love of the Lord fills the earth by the word of the Lord. The heavens were made. Alleluia. Yeah. 
shepherd. He's laid down his life for his sheep. So out of many nations he's gathered one for the one faith. There is one faith, one hope. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you raise us to Jesus, you forgive us our sins, please stay and lay song, please stay and lay song. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it's revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. <laughs> Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father lost me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
We are friends in Christ on the fourth Sunday of Easter. We celebrate the Good Shepherd Sunday. So on this day, I like us to reflect on one flock, one shepherd. The title, Good Shepherd, is one of the most profound titles of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he is not just a shepherd, but a good one. But before we talk about his goodness, let us first of all identify who exactly is a shepherd. The image of a shepherd is well understood in the Jewish culture because most of them were shepherds. They took care of animals. They were caregivers. And in taking care of animals, they needed to be the leaders of the same animals, leading them to good place of pasture, providing them with good food and good drink. It was also the duty of the shepherd to protect the flock. And once the flock is at risk, the shepherd has the duty to ensure that before the lives of the flock is harmed, his own life will first of all be taken. Such was the expectation of shepherding. So when Christ says, I am the good shepherd, he is saying, I am your provider, I am your protector, I am your healer, I am your everything for survival. He is the shepherd per excellence. He is the ideal shepherd, which every shepherd needs to look up to. In other words, a failure to follow the shepherd means that no one can be a good shepherd. For anyone to take up the responsibility of shepherding, he must first of all have learned the art of shepherding from the master himself. He says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. He does his work lovingly. His job as a shepherd is not a paid job. And this is very, very important in our world today because very often we find ourselves counting hours and appropriating values to things on the basis of our pay. But it is interesting to know that our work as shepherd is the most important, even though it, it would not attract pay. Christ is the good shepherd, and he shows us the example of shepherding. One shepherd, one flock. That is to say, whoever leads in this world must first of all look up to Jesus for direction. And whoever fails out of arrogance or pride 
to submit to him first can never be a good leader. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. So a failure to accept Jesus as our primary leader would mean that even if we take up leadership positions, we would fail. And most importantly, if we look to any leader that does not look to Jesus, we would be disappointed. We would be exploited. And leaders like that will take advantage of us. One shepherd, one flock. He unites God's people, intending to care for all. Today, we are told there is a good shepherd. He's not just a good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Because there's a distinction between a good shepherd and the good shepherd. For in him, there is a fullness of shepherding. And every good shepherd draws inspiration from him. He is the most reliable example. So the good shepherd exists. But the question is, is the good shepherd my shepherd? Do I belong to his flock? If I belong to his flock, then my security is guaranteed. My protection is sure. Then he becomes my greatest value. Do I belong to the flock? He says, the sheep recognizes my voice. I know him and they know me. Wow. What an assurance that the Lord knows every one of us by name. That he is mindful of our challenges, our concerns, our fears, our anxieties. But do we in turn recognize his voice and in humility Ask him to take charge over our lives. The sheep recognizes his voice. In our world today, the sheep has to recognize the voice of the shepherd. Otherwise, the sheep is at risk constantly. The flock will be exploited if there is a failure to recognize whom the shepherd is. Because our world is full of scammers and many even in the name of Jesus exploit God's people. How then can we recognize the voice of the shepherd? We must first of all be attentive to his word. We must first of all be familiar with his principles. He loved to the end. He loved the sheep to the point of laying down his life for the sheep. So whoever represents him and fails to demonstrate this attribute of self-sacrifice is not a shepherd, but a robber and a thief. Such an individual 
who does not conform his life to that of Christ, regardless of the office he, he holds or she holds in church or in the state, is not worthy of being followed. Any shepherd that fails to follow the good shepherd is not worthy of being followed by anyone politically or religiously. So before we gravitate towards anyone, we may want to double check how consistent is the message of this preacher to the message of the cross. How consistent is the policy of this politician with the message of the gospel values? When we have this at the back of our minds, it becomes easy to discern God's will for our lives, God's will for our society, God's will for our children. In that way, we remain constantly under the protective care of the good shepherd whose work is still alive in the world. But we have to recognize his work and those who have allowed him to use them as his representative. Our world is saturated with religious noise. And if we are not careful, we could be misled. It does not matter the portfolio. It does not matter the office. Everyone has to be scrutinized in our world today. And what is the basis for the scrutiny? It is in the scripture. The stone with the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Only him can bring about that structure of God's temple that will accommodate God's people. Dear friends in Christ, on the Sunday that we celebrate the Good Shepherd, we also pray specifically, especially for vocations. Vocations to the clerical state, vocation to the married state, vocation to the consecrated life. This goes to tell us that belonging to the flock of the good shepherd means that we necessarily have to exhibit the qualities that we have benefited from or we benefit from. So like Pope Francis would say, when the sheep recognizes the voice of the good shepherd, that voice inspires the sheep to follow. And what does it mean to follow? It means that we go wherever the shepherd goes. And he goes in search of the lost sheep. He identifies with the vulnerable, the weak in the society. He attempts to reunite the strayed sheep. This is the work of a good shepherd. In his woundedness, he heals the, the sheep. It is exemplified at the cross. His heart was pierced. And that gave forth the Eucharist to nourish, to heal those wounded by sin. The good shepherd is the one that is wounded by loving. As we belong to his flock, we are challenged to follow in his footsteps, to rebuild our families, to allow our pain to translate into comfort for someone in the family. To allow our pain to help us 
become better helpers to our friends. The good shepherd sacrifices himself for the sheep. As we celebrate his goodness, we are invited to be good ourselves. So it is not enough to say, I am a parent. Are you a good one? It is not enough to say, I am a priest. Am I a good priest? Everyone should live up to the expectation of belonging to the flock of the good shepherd. For a failure to measure up would mean that we drag his reputation to the mud. The good shepherd deserves a good flock. May God help us to measure up to this expectation through Christ, our Lord. I believe We hand ourselves over to God, the Father who judges justly, and with heart filled with confidence, we now pray for the bishops, the shepherds of the church, that they will be filled with zeal and favor of divine love. We pray to the Lord, Lord for those who govern, that they will remain committed to peace, truth, justice, and common good. Let us pray to the Lord. For this world day of prayer for vocation, that the Lord may raise up many vocations to the priesthood, to the consecrated life, and the married state, especially from our own parish. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us here at St. Timothy, to have a grace to hear the voice of Christ always, and to remain securely in his one flock. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For those who are sick, including the Alonso family, Mayen Handy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For those who have died, including Quentin Alexander, we pray to the Lord. Lord, And for the repose of the souls of Rose King and Mary Mick. Kittish, we pray to the Lord. We now offer our own needs in the silence of our heart. For this we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, you sent your Son and raised him from the dead so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Keep us obedient to our 
new life in Christ, through Christ our Lord. Say again. 
today, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these pastoral mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, we will bow to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for free your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make up us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, espouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious mothers, with St. Timothy and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, Eduardo, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all, who are pleasing to you of your passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. against us and lead us 
us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distresses. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastors the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This coming Saturday, we will be hosting our quarterly Leadership formation event, same, from 9.15 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the social hall. Anyone involved in a parish ministry is invited to attend so that we can learn and grow together in our mission as a, as a parish. Our special collection next week will be for Catholic Home Missions which supports dioceses in the United States that are unable to fund pastoral activities on their own. This collection helps our brothers and sisters in undeserved areas have access to the sacrament. On, in underserved areas, have access to the sacraments. We have new initiative forming here at the parish to dedicate time to praying for each of our priests, Jane Danaher, a parishioner, is seeking 21 women to commit to praying a weekly holy hour for each of our priests. For more information or to sign up, please contact Jane. Her information is on the worship aid. If you are new in this parish, we invite you to join us for our new parishional welcome next Saturday after the 5 p.m. Mass in the Spirituality Center. The evening includes dinner and an opportunity to learn more about how our parish can serve you and how you can participate fully in our life. As always, please check our parish website for more details. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to come for you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in the right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth the masses and then
Let's worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what the Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Savior, your name lives in high, oh God, you have done. 